All right, we're gonna take a look at the first FRQ in the 2025 AP pre-calculus exam. So we have the function f is decreasing and defined for all real numbers. The table gives values for f of x given here. The function g is given by this. The function h is defined as g of f of x or g of f of x here. Find the value of h of one as a decimal approximation or indicate that is not defined. Show the work that leads to your answer. Okay, so h of one, we're just gonna plug one into here one into this thing. So it's going to be G of F of one. I like this note. I don't really like this notation. That's not my preference. I prefer this notation. And I would suggest you look at that F of one. We can look at that. Oh, it's 1.75. That's G of 1.75. And let's use Desmos to handle our, our definition of G of X here. It's negative 0 0.167 X cubed plus X squared minus 1.834. And we just need to compute g of 1.75. And that gives going to give me 0 0.3335. I forget if they want three decimal places. I'm pretty sure it's usually three decimal places. But um, I, you can double check. But that's the right answer there. Find the value of f inverse of 3.5. So remember, for inverses, we're swapping the x and y values. So we know by this notation, f of 0, for example, equals 3.5. And so therefore, you swap the x and the y, that means zero is f inverse of 3.5. So zero would be our answer here. Okay, find all values of x as decimal approximations for a g of x equals zero. Well, that's pretty easy on the Desmos. You, you can use, those are the three locations here. So you would say g of x equals zero, and then just write the points negative 1.233, uh, 1.578, and then 5.643, okay? And then we want to determine the behavior of G as X increases without bound, express your answer. So X is increasing. We want the limit as X goes to infinity of G of X, and that's our notation. We're saying as X goes to infinity, what does the Y value do? Well, it's just gonna continue downward, right? Downward here, so that's gonna be negative infinity. And so that would be our notation for that. That's our limit notation there. Okay, based on the table, which of the following function times best models f? So now we're going back to f, not our g, but back, back to f. And we want to base it, if it's a linear, quadratic, exponential, or logarithmic, we want to look at it based on the differences. So the differences here, we would say is you're going to minus 7, minus 3.5, minus 1.75, and then minus 0 0.875. And so you can see the differences are decreasing. So that's either flattening out. That should narrow it down to either a logarithmic. And so an exponential, it would be constantly, it was going to be getting bigger and bigger, that differences. But these differences are getting smaller and smaller. So that's either going to be a geometric. Um, actually, sorry, what are the options that we get? Linear, quadratic, exponential, or logarithmic. So it's not exponentially growing. But it's either exponential or logarithmic, one of those forms, not linear or quadratic or anything like that, because the differences are still staying the same. But if you recognize it, we're only multiplying by one half every time. Times one half, times one half, times one half. So you think about it as the, the multiplying by. And so we want to think about the differences. The differences are remaining the same amount, or the exact wording we want to use is, so we want to say that the output changes proportionally. That's the key thing. So first of all, one here is going to be exponential. And that is um, every uh, increase in F results, uh, sorry, every, sorry, equally spaced increase, equally spaced. I'm not as good, I'm not as well versed at the wording that they want here. So every equally spaced increase in F results in uh, proportional difference in the value of f. In other words, every increase in 1 by 1 uh, results in the value being multiplied by one half. Okay, and that's what makes it 
exponential in nature. 